Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally starting to film, starting, I don't know if I can finish it, I'm starting to film my coffee dye um, video that I promised a while ago um, because you guys want to know how I coffee dye my paper with all these um, patterns on them. So I just looked through my paper stash and I'm very low um, on my pattern paper. So I got some of my journals out to show you um, examples. So this one was just a leftover uh, of a paper that I had dyed with coffee. I love this pattern. Um, I also did this one. Isn't this nice? Let's see if there's any other ones in here that are good. Uh, there's this one with the dots that actually um, I didn't do on purpose. It's from the, the, it's like a baking pan that I dried my papers on and it just took those, uh, the pattern. So you have dark circles or dark dots on one side and then the light ones on the other side, which is a cool effect, I think. Uh, what else do we have? Here is a very, um, um, dark, dark one version of this one. That's the other side. Oh yeah, here you can see. Isn't this cool? I love it. Um, here's another one of this. What else do we have? There's a darker one of this one. And it's cool because each one looks differently. It's not never the same. But I think that just adds the, it makes it even more special. Okay, what else do we have? Um, lighter ones. I guess that's it for this one. Uh, and then in the in my giveaway journal, I had added a new pattern that I have. That was this one. Where's the other side? Um, here we go. There's the other side of it. And when I put this down on a towel to dry, unfortunately the towel had some blue food coloring on it. That's why uh, there's some blue in here. So uh, next time I'm going to use a clean towel. Okay, and then I also have this. This was just an experiment um, on a big index card. And I love doing stuff like this also on index cards. Okay, so um, let me get the paper so I can show you what paper I use to dye my uh, or what I use for coffee dyeing. So if you dye a lot of, or coffee dye or tea dye a lot of uh, paper, obviously you probably don't want to use the super expensive paper. Um, I usually use this one, which is just regular copy paper. The weight is um, 20 pounds. And well, these are the, this is the information on the package. And I got these from Walmart. Um, like I said, it's really just plain copy paper. It's a little thin, um, but if you print a lot or if you dye a lot, then it can get pricey if you have to buy a lot of paper. And then this one I also use. This is a little, uh, a little thicker. This is 28 pounds and um, it's a little smoother and thicker than this one. So you can... I don't know if you can see, you can see through this a lot more than through this one. Um, so I would say, I think I used, yeah, I've used both. This is, uh, usually I use these for just regular um, coffee dyeing. You just dip it in coffee and then dry it. And then I use this one. It's a little fancier, so. But you can try any paper. One paper I do not recommend is paper like this or um, uh, if I can get it out hold on the cheaper the paper the less the quality um, so this is graph paper and I figured hey I can try a uh, graph paper because when you fold it you can still write like this however all these lines disappeared as soon as you put it in water so I'm not going to use this again and then this is uh, 
let's see, it has a lot of tooth. So it's it's very rough and it sucks up all the water. So this gets really thin and also those lines wash out a little bit or bleed. So I don't really use those anymore. Um, but you can use, um, let's see, I use like notebooks. Sometimes you can find those fancy notebooks in the store, like this. Um, I have a ton because I never use, I never really write in them because I never know what to write. I love, I love notebooks and paper, but yeah, I just, and then I figured, hey, I can just use this paper and coffee dye because lined paper, especially with these little like um, thinner lines, this is not, not like, uh, yeah, it's more like college ruled. Uh, these are great for backing your your tag so you can actually journal on the back of them so I just take those and uh, take the pages out and also you can dye regular um, um, let me see um, index cards let me get some of my cards oh if I can find them or oops these ones these i've showed those before and i can link them in the in description below these are just uh index size um checklist cards and they're fairly thick and um, i like coffee dyeing them because they look actually really cool and i got those from amazon but they only come in a pack of i think 300 so if you buy those you'll be good for quite a while i love Turn, I like turning those into journaling cards or I just cut like this part off and I use them on uh, the back of packs. And then just a regular, um, oops, sorry, I gotta clean up here. The regular index cards. Okay, so let me put all this stuff back and then I can show you what I actually use for my patterns. Um, I tried different things and what I do I have not tried this in the oven because I'd like to not burn down my house. <laughs> so I uh, coffee dye usually on the summer outside on the deck because the sun is your friend, my, my friends. And I use all these kinds of things. Okay, so I tried um, different different things and to see what works. So this is just some lace, and it's already been coffee dyed several times. That came from a roll that I got like at Walmart or so. Just like a nice, and I can't really tell. Let's see if I have a paper that I can put under it. Of course not. It's just like a floral, floral pattern. And then this one is a piece of a table runner. And I just love all these little flowers. So that's great. This is a piece of a curtain, I think. And it smells like coffee. <laughs> and it, I just cut the piece out that has nice flowers. So these are great. Obviously, I wouldn't put those in the oven. Um, I'm not sure exactly at what temperature you would dry your paper in the oven. I've done this before, but I, I like stayed there and watched to make sure I don't overheat the paper and it doesn't catch fire but um if you live in a warm climate or if you have dry sunny days totally do it outside just make sure the, sun, the wind doesn't blow stuff away so this one is actually like a placemat that i got from oh okay so this one came from goodwill I got a dollar each but this these are originally from hobby lobby and they were like 3.99 from hobby lobby and these are just like plastic table placemats i guess um and the best time to buy those is when they have like because these were from the spring spring shop and um you can buy those i think cheap when they have like when spring's over and they have everything on clearance so you can find those i bought two and this is the one that i used for this pattern oops <laughs> for this pattern Isn't this pretty and I will show you how to do that once I can actually go outside and dye my stuff. And then I have this one, which I got at Walmart. So if you go to Walmart and to the aisle that has uh, like the silverware and other placemats, sometimes you're lucky and you find these and they're not super expensive. But they're like, I like that they're um, like plastic or rubbery because 
the water doesn't do anything to them or the coffee. Um, so this one was, let's see, this pattern. And then I have not tried this one yet, but this one also came from, I think, Hobby Lobby or where did this one come from? Yes, Hobby Lobby. So, but again, I didn't buy full, I didn't pay full price. This was 14 bucks. I would never buy this for 14 bucks. I got this like, I think 70% off and I have not tried it yet. It was laying in my craft room all winter because it was from the fall because you can see acorns here. I just thought this would be a really cool pattern. I might actually cut it in half. Um, and I have to get the fold out. But um, again, it's like a rubbery plastic table runner, a pla uh, placemat. It's vinyl. Here we go, vinyl tableware. And so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to trying this one. Um, what else is there? You can try to use doilies. I haven't had good experience with doilies. If you have any nice. Um, like these crochet darlies, you can try those if you are willing to give them up because they will end up looking like this. So if you are not attached to them, go ahead and use them. I think this will actually be a really cool, really cool pattern. So I bought it, I paid a dollar for this at the at the um, antique store. Um, what else do I have? Every once in a while, when you find like these things at Goodwill, always look in the linen department or linen sh um, shelf to find these, or even like a big piece of um, a tablecloth that's like lace, or if you have just rolls of lace, um, you can take cut pieces off of that and you try that. And I actually might try, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but this is like really nice uh, lace ribbon. The little flowers but we shall see so but i'm going to show you guys how i use this and how i use the plastic mats or vinyl mats um and all you need is coffee paper obviously water and warmth um and yeah so let's go outside and do some coffee dyeing all right so i have my phone in my hand and i'm gonna try not to make you dizzy it is really warm today. Um, I have one of those aluminum uh, pans of uh, water and there's already a bug in it. And I got all my paper and stuff and my um, vinyl placemats. And the coffee that I usually use is just a Walmart coffee. It's the cheapest one I could find. And I don't really have like a measurement. I just put a bunch of coffee in there. I guess the, the darker you want it, the more coffee you should put in there. And I'm just gonna dissolve it. And I usually um, reuse this pen. I just wasn't out and reuse it. So I have a whole bunch of them because when I was um, when I was pregnant, I did lots of freezer meals and I had a ton of these guys left from when I uh, cooked all the meals for when we had our baby. Okay, so um, I also, have a towel here and here's my dog for those of you who wanted to meet him that's trigger hi trigger um and what i do i have some of those uh, index cards and paper and usually what i do i dip the paper in there and then i put it on the towel to dry in the sun that's very important because the sun makes it really dark usually i have the pen next to it uh, but I didn't want to like blind you guys with the reflection of the sun. So let's see if I can do it one-handed. Um, let's get one of these things ready. Sorry if this is really shaky. First I was gonna take my tripod with me, but I don't know where to put it. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip it in the, in the coffee real quick. Let drip off, put it over here and then all you do is put this on top. Maybe try to put it, ugh, now we're stuck. Put it like in the middle, in the center, or however you want it. And um, so what I have learned, the sun, oh, and I left my spray ball inside. The sun actually makes these spots that are exposed to the sun really dark. So that's how I get my really dark um, patterns. 
but I also have a spray bottle with coffee and I just gotta get it real quick. Okay, so I um, soaked a few papers in coffee and put different things on top. And I have this really cheap spray bottle from Walmart and um, I put coffee in it. And especially with the, let me try not to be in, make shade here, um, with the ones that are lace or, or like um, the table runner thingies, crocheted ones, um, in order to stick them, really make them lay down onto the paper, I just soak them in coffee. And um, then you just let it dry. And I have never used this one, so I'm just gonna spray this. And from my experience, when you also, you don't have to spray it after you already dipped it in coffee, but when I do this, because it only sprays on the exposed spots, which the sun will then dry and it makes it even darker. So I'm just gonna make this really saturated coffee. And then we're gonna do this one. And then this one. And you just wanna make sure that this is really like on the paper and this one is already dry because <laughs> the sun is really warm okay so can i get a fly on me i should dry fairly quick so you see here, there's a few puddles. So this might get darker. It's because the towel is not like even. So yeah, and then we just let it dry. And then when they're dry, I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, so while we're waiting for this stuff to dry, um, I put uh, these two index cards under the lace and um, I put a whole bunch of index cards under this one and then I just uh, found these two. These were like this one over there. I just cut it into four pieces. So I have like smaller, smaller um, pieces. And I also just got this one. I um, usually keep this in the basement so we don't use it accidentally in the oven. Um, this I think came with our, like it was in, our, in the drawer under our old oven when we moved into this house. And this is actually what makes those um, polka dot patterns. So all I did with this one um, was dip my paper in coffee. Come on. And I just laid it on top of it. It's, it might um, actually, it might dry onto this, but you just have to wait until it's um, dry and then you can peel it off. So, and you can always um, find stuff like this at Goodwill. I always look in the, like, the aisle that has like the baking dishes and um, baking sheets. So you can already see the, the pattern and it's just gonna dry like this. And then you have, um, on one side, you're gonna have darker spots and on the other side, it's gonna be lighter spots. Yep. So now we're just gonna wait and see how this stuff turns out. I think this one is done. If we carefully take this off, look at this nice pattern. Isn't this pretty? And it's okay if the paper's not 100% dry. Um, you can just take it inside and let it dry, but we see what the sun did. And um, let's go look at this one. It's also very pretty. Love it. And then the ones with the lace, I'm going to let dry some more. But then let's look at this one. So pretty. And now I can dye some more paper. And that was like 10, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. So I guess if you bake them, there's many different ways to do it, to dry them. But this is my way. But I guess if you bake them, you can put more in faster or dry them faster. But I like, I like doing this outside. It's reveal time. So this one actually just flew away from the wind um, while I was watering the lawn. So you can see those 
polka dots on this. And here we have this little index card. Pretty. Same one. And then we have these six index cards that all have this pattern, including some dirt. Isn't this neat? I think, I, oops, I like this one the best. I can still journal on the back. And then we have this one. Isn't this cool? And then let's do this one. So I, I just put these ones, like put three papers under the big one here. And oh no, <laughs> that's too funny. I accidentally folded that paper. Oh well, I can still use it for some stuff, but those are the nice patterns. Um, let's see if I can get here without making shade or shadow. These two, mm, it's not too, too dark. These are always hit or miss with, with the lace. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Then I have another one of those. And then I have this one, which I also like a lot. These are all the papers and cards we've dyed today. I love them all. Each one is unique. Um, and I'll see if I can find any of those um, vinyl placemats or plastic tablecloths on on um, Amazon and I can link them below. Otherwise I suggest always look at um, Goodwill and at uh, Hobby Lobby if you have a Hobby Lobby nearby. Especially during like when, when they have like a, everything on sale, like the seasonal stuff on sale. And then maybe Dollar Tree has some of those. I, f I would think that Dollar Tree would have stuff like this. So yeah. Let me know what you think, and I hope this uh, gave you some ideas on how to coffee dye your own paper. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked it, and leave me a comment, and let me know which one you like the best. I really like this one. It's fall. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!